in the mountain now, um, what I've been trying to do is uh, screen capture which I can't and talk at the same time with a picture very nice and now we're just trying on Ash's computer and she's having trouble she can uh, capture with sound and uh, can't on the screen capture on the uh, on the smart screen on the smart screen the other Dell computer I've got, um, it converts it to a strange file and takes a bit of fooling around to get it open. So what I was talking about was uh, how America, you don't have to go to arms for a civil war. You don't need weapons. The greatest weapon you've got is in your backyard. And uh, that is uh, to not deal ever again with the corporate world. They're out of business. They're all Jews. Paid for by your money that they've printed, which they pay back to themselves after printing the money out of nothing and therefore when they need money they just buy a company and that's it, it's all fraudulently taken. Right. So tell them what you own, they take from you. Alright, so we've got one politician in America who stood up and uh, condemned every word I've said about the Jews and supporting Israel and so forth. The churches are all condemned of course because they know I'm here and not even discussing it amongst themselves, but they're all Freemason, Freemason Bibles. So they're out of business. Don't throw it out, of course, keep it. I'll give you some of them, that's now. The fracking, um, if any of you farmers out there have put in septic tanks, you know the septic field you put out um, for the sewage. What you do is you put the same field out all over your property. Run the pipes back to a central point and all that gas is coming up through there to protect your house from blowing up. And you do this under, declared under martial law and the kingdom of God has come to the earth and um, they hang a sign on your gate. Brian, I like you like your martial. Kingdom of God. That's your paradise for. So you then click the gas and you can then generate electricity from it by a, an old car, an old truck. Um, you take the gas mixture and place it straight into the carburetor and set it at 2000 revs and you've got power coming off your axle or you've got power coming off the generators or the alternators that you can get specially made and installed in a big array at the front of the vehicle with the top off. And uh, then take that electricity and put it into the two or three welding outlets you've got and sell it back to the grid. Now, if everyone in the fracking areas of America do that, you'll have your own uh, source of uh, income and uh, you're producing electricity for the good of the nation because you're bleeding off the gas and the corporations are out of business, they know what you can't. So if one comes onto your site, we'll just shoot him. No problem. You get a, you get a freebie. And um, this is civil war. God's way. Okay, so uh, let's get this straight. My father drove an old truck. Had solid rubber tyres delivering wool to the wharves for the war effort. And uh, he was in a protected industry, so he couldn't go away. Therefore, that got me in. Conceived. <coughs> However, they had no fuel. And uh, they used to put a big bag on the back of the truck and then trundle it around at five, ten miles per hour, all in wool, using natural gas. So I think they put uh, a huge bag, fill it at the, uh, before they left for the day. And uh, then a weight was put on top and that forced the gas out of this balloon into the carburetor system where it was regulated rather cleverly but uh, in those days you set the truck at, at uh, 2000 revs, 10 miles per hour and uh, away you go. So they were running for free, getting paid by the government to do it and um, there's many stories I learned about the Wolves in, uh, in Australia and how um, it operates. Now the men there are very powerful. 
so that it'll break them up. Uh, funny as can be. Uh, I went to school with a kid, Freddie Perkins. He was a screen, absolute screen. No matter what he did, hilarious, handsome young yeah, And he moves from uh, Redfern, where he's living, to Curry, to uh, Rose Bay. Soon he wants more, he pulled in on his motorbike and said hello, and then off he went. My brother in law, he was he got the best and fairest player for the Navy in uh, Australian rules football. He run like a rabbit. I could hardly keep up with him. And I was a top sprinter, right? He was two inches in front of me, that's where it stayed. So uh, he comes out to the Navy and he uh, joins the wolves. So he's now a wolfie. I come back from Canada and uh, he says to me, you've got to come down to wolves and meet my mate Fred. He said, he's the funniest man in the world. So he's on a month. Finally I did so. And we go down, we're in the pub because all the men, they come out. Walk up, work on the walls for an hour, go across the pub, get pissed, go back to work again. Lunch break, right over the pub again. And it was just how it was, it was funny. But these men worked efficiently, even though they were drunk. Worked slow. So uh, the pub is jammed full of wolfies. Huh? And I walk in with my brother in law, Ian, and up the end of the bar, everyone's screaming out laughter. And there's Freddie Perkins, my mate I went to school with. <laughs> Shortly after that, my uh, brother in law was at work and he died. And uh, three days after, he appeared to my sister in the bedroom. And she said that he still had the stubble that had grown over the three day period he'd been away. And he said, I'm sorry, love, I had to go give her a kiss and that was it. He walked out the room while he was gone. She said she didn't want to see me anymore. That made it a uh, complete slam dunk. Everyone in the family rejected me. So uh, I'm smiling from here to here but it's sad because I wanted to see my sister. So uh, you put in these these uh, cheap pipe, uh, put gravel on top, dig it as wide as you like, because you're trying to catch all the all the gas coming up in the uh, in the property. So you put plastic in there, make a gas envelope, and then the gas is then seeps into the uh, draw it into the area where you're going to burn to produce fuel from your truck or your tractor or your whatever your farmers use. You come up, you actually come up with something. Some of you are quite smart. In a sort of dumb sort of way. Anyhow, that'll uh, generate all electricity in the world for you. you, know, you get these magnetic motors now, but you don't really need them. Because uh, you can run your cars on the same gas. In Canada, they were uh, manufacturing, before they got shut down, a pump system which collected the gas, natural gas, and um, compressed it into a liquid, and then put it into your car that's like the taxis in the cities run on LPG, liquid petroleum. So you can do that too, and it's clean. But you have no ribs again. Just put these on. It's 
96 years old. You look better than that. Jabbing with a frotty umbrella. <laughs>